Welcome to Straight Talk. Cheeky, confident or desperate? That's what farmers are asking themselves as meat company Silver Fern Farms pushes its shareholders and those of rival alliance to think seriously about a merger. With spring lamb prices now hitting the $136 mark, maybe sheep and beef farmers are poised to take the plunge and approve a big change in their industry. And that daredevil tourism has toppled dairying as the country's biggest export earner. But does this tell the whole story when it comes to New Zealand's reliance on agriculture? Today I'm joined by meat industry commentator Alan Barber and former Federated Farmers Vice President Keith Hanning. Now Alan, what do you make of the uh, Silver Fern Farm uh, move? Uh, confident? Cheeky? Desperate? Which one? Well, I termed it cheeky <laughs> in my column in Farmers Weekly. Mm. Um, I don't think it's desperate. I think they are definitely trying to win the PR battle against Alliance because mm -hmm. Alliance has very strongly taken the view that we don't want a bar of this because it doesn't make, uh, doesn't make sense uh, financially from the Alliance shareholders' point of view. So uh, Silverfern Farms are saying, well, if you're not going to come and talk to us willingly, then we're going to try and embarrass you into it. Mm -hmm. And you'd have to say it's, it's quite a clever uh, tactic. Whether it'll work or not is another matter, but I think it's all about uh, getting the stone foundations to crumble mm. and chipping away and mm. trying to get Alliance to uh, finally to come to the party. Mm. What do you think, Keith? Well, you I, I uh, keep up with meat all, industry matters? Mm. Basically what they're looking at is the question of how we rationalise the industry, mm -hmm. because somebody's got to take a cut somewhere with the number of drop in sheep numbers with dairying taking over in a lot of places in Southland. Mm -hmm and also the number of works that will need to be closed and I've heard figure, quite considerable figures of millions of dollars of that capital investment they've got that they're going to have to write down. The companies are going to have to look at it. Uh, somebody I spoke to recently suggested if they could do it together it would be great mm -hmm. but who will have the courage to sit down and do it and mm -hmm. perhaps they need something beyond each company that can bring them together and do that. But well, that's the point that yeah. the Alliance Board's making, is that the overcapacity is all sitting in Silver Fern Farms, and that really Alliance mm. doesn't have a problem, AFCO doesn't have a problem, ANSCO doesn't have a problem, it's so the really one that's left, left with the problem in both the North and the South Island is Silver Fern Farms. Mm. Now, whether that's entirely mm. correct or not, or whether yeah. it's a facile judgement, I'm mm. not sure, but, um, but you'd say that... Uh, that's the alliance bargaining position. Mm. Mm -hmm. If we don't see a benefit because we know that uh, that they're sitting on the overcapacity, why should we take the take the cut? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Yeah. In the end, it'll be the banks that that mm. yeah. uh, will tell Silver Fern Farms if yeah. they if they mm. get to that point, mm. as they did with Fortex in the past. Right. The banks. Now, um, when uh, Keith was mentioning before about there there needing to be some other element uh, besides the meat companies themselves mm. uh, getting involved in uh, this this argument, um, Alan, is there any chance the government's likely to uh, lend a helping hand? David well, Carter's had a fairly strong hand on the wool industry, hasn't yeah, well, he? Yeah. Keith and I were talking about this before briefly, and uh, our judgment was that uh, there's absolutely no way the government's going to take responsibility yeah. for uh, mandating a producer board effectively to take over the meat industry again. It was mm -hmm. a disaster in the 1970s, yeah. 80s when the meat board uh, acquired, uh, acquired inventory. Um, mm -hmm. It won't happen. It mm -hmm. would be so unpopular, but it would also be financially impossible. Mm -hmm. How are Tally's going to sit back and say, well, we'll, we'll sell you AFCO at a, <laughs> at a knockdown valuation just so that you can rationalise the whole meat industry? Tally's have gone on in a completely different direction. They're a broader food company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to go in a certain, a certain direction. So mm -hmm. I think anything that happens in the meat industry, we, we will have to assume that Tally's are not part of it. Right. And what will their attitude be towards uh, Silver Fern Farms? They'll just say, uh, we'll keep completely out of this and uh, just see what uh, Alliance uh, does? Well, Silver Fern Farms' um, plea is now not to try and bring the whole industry together, mm. but it's to get Alliance and, and Silver Fern Farms as the two cooperatives to merge. Mm -hmm. um, so that then, as Alliance, as Owen Poole has said, mm. leaves the other nearly 50% of the industry standing outside, and that's not mm -hmm. big enough to make, uh, to make it happen. To make mm -hmm. it to make yeah. it work, right? And they don't need to uh, have the rationalisation of plants uh, that needs to occur um, just within Silver Fern Farms, presumably. They're in quite a good position, Tallies. Well, they're 
Tallies have got their production capacity into absolutely top shape. Mm -hmm. They mm -hmm. have my observation, and I went to uh, went down to uh, AFCO a couple of weeks ago. My observation is that uh, they they have absolutely tip-top condition mm -hmm. processing facilities and they're in the process now of in fact closing down their Malvern plant um, to uh, bring it up to export standard and to re-employ the workforce on terms and conditions that will make it every bit as competitive as all its mm -hmm. other plants. Mm -hmm. So that's that's good news. What about the uh, high lamb prices we've seen recently? Uh, Keith, is that going to make much difference, do you think, that uh, farmers who might have looked before at getting into uh, dairying or reducing sheep mm. numbers, they might think again? Well, I don't think so. No. I think if you're looking at it, farmers are facing a pretty grim season in a lot of places because mm -hmm. they've lost a lot of lambs during the storms. Mm -hmm. uh, also, a lot of them have had very bad uh, uh, income in the last two or three years with the mm. lower lamb prices, and therefore I think a lot of them will be trying to reduce their debt to the bank more than looking at anything else beyond mm. that. So it will be, be a continuing trend with uh, lower lamb numbers, perhaps, Alan? I don't think lamb numbers are going to uh, tip up at all in the, next, uh, in the next couple of years. No. I mean, the observation that I'd make about the, uh, about the sheep farming industry mm. is that um, good sheep farmers are doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. At the present mm. prices, with relatively little debt and good farming yeah. practices, there are some extremely successful yeah. sheep farmers or sheep and beef right. farmers. The wool prices are helping as well mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, but the, the farmers that are getting out of the sheep industry are probably the ones that should get out of the yeah, sheep industry because yeah. they aren't good enough farmers. No, so then that's for everyone's uh, benefit, really. Mm. Now, moving on to uh, tourism. Um, supplanting uh, dairying as uh, the country's biggest export earner. Uh, does this thing send a misleading signal, do you think, Alan, in terms of uh, where that income's coming from and how it's calculated? Yes, I think so, because at least we know with, uh, with agriculture that um, probably 90% of what's produced in New Zealand does actually go offshore, and that's both our strength and our weakness. Mm -hmm. But with tourism, there's an enormous amount of internal mm -hmm. uh, dollars going round and round in circles internally. There's a lot of internal tourism. Mm -hmm. How they split those f the export figures out from the domestic, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But I think tourism is always going to be a completely different type of industry from agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it will never replace agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we have an obligation and a, and a duty to ourselves to promote both of them as extraordinarily important to the well-being of New Zealand. Absolutely. What do and, you think, and, Well, the more tourists we get, the more New Zealand produce is consumed by them. That's mm -hmm. one way I see it, wine or meat or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But is there a danger in uh, perhaps the general public thinking, oh, agriculture's uh, had its day, tourism is so much on the up, uh, that's where we need to concentrate more uh, effort and resources? I think there's always a need for farming and farming leaders to present the case to New Zealand of the importance of the agricultural industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anything that undercuts that, that needs to be dealt with. Mm. So we just need to be on close on, watch. Yeah. 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 Coming up after the break, what does US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's visit mean for future trade relationships with the US? And Fonterra's application for a resource consent to dump waste into the Manawatu River has the Greens on the war path. Who's right and who's wrong? Stay with us. Welcome back to Straight Talk. Now it's on to You Said It. Timely topics making the rounds in the ag media, starting with the visit of one of the most powerful women in the world, US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. What do you think her visit uh, has meant for uh, New Zealand, uh, Keith? Well, I, I think at the moment Hillary's uh, mind was probably on what was happening in America with the Senate and, and congressional elections yes. and, and what yes. the Obama administration could do beyond that. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure that our gov New Zealand government was putting a lot of pressure on extending the trade deals and so on with America. And mm -hmm. Yeah, good one. What do you think, uh, Alan, the uh, Trans-Pacific Partnership, uh, if uh, this gets the go-ahead, it's going to have some pretty big advantages for New Zealand exporters, meat companies amongst them? Well, potentially, yes, but mm. I think there's a lot of water to go under the bridge before the TPP is actually uh, agreed and negotiated. At the moment, we've got a whole series of free trade 
agreements with different countries within the partnership. Mm -hmm. And I think America, the United States, wants to be seen as the leader of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. But mm -hmm. then, of course, whether it's really prepared to take on its own agricultural lobby and mm -hmm. free up the trade to provide the opportunity for free trade between uh, New Zealand and Australia or mm. within the whole Pacific area is, is another matter. I'm, mm. I think long term it could be absolutely great, but mm. short to medium term I don't think much is going to change. No. There's still some pretty big objections from uh, major powers like Japan and not only uh, over the issue of rice, for example, isn't there? So by and the time you deal with, with all those... Within the American uh, country, I mean, in terms of farmers and so on and in terms mm. of going towards free trade, there's yes. big pressures, and particularly from the de democratic areas of the states. Mm -hmm. mm. But uh, any steps that uh, we can help take, I guess, have to be uh, oh, positive. have to be positive. And I yes. think the, the fact that the that the Clinton has come to New Zealand yeah. is even an important point. Yes. Absolutely, yes, because the, it puts the, the to mood. bed some of the, yeah. the problems yeah. of the past. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the relationship between the two countries is warmer than it's mm. been for 20. Yeah. five years uh, mm. and more so uh, I think um, and we don't seem to be compromising on our main principles of right. nuclear free and uh, uh, rejoining ANZUS mm -hmm. which, wo which won't happen in the short term mm. uh, and probably shouldn't mm. uh, so uh, I think Hillary Clinton is a very important uh, cog in that particular mm. wheel for us. So very good for uh, us mm. to have had her here. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right, now moving on. Um, Fonterra's in the news on the uh, Country 99 TV website with its application for a, uh, a resource consent to discharge waste into the Manawatu River. Uh, that's being opposed by the Greens. Um, who's right in this sort of ongoing battle, Keith? I don't think either's right. Mm. Uh, I would assume very much that Fonterra's desperately trying to change things to improve mm. it. Mm. Uh, the Greens always want something immediately and that creates problems. Mm -hmm. um, I think Fonterra will be looking at irrigating that uh, byproducts so, so that they, there's a relatively good nitrogen content in it can mm -hmm. be used for irrigation. Mm. There's a lot of other things. They will be looking at trying to change things as much and as quickly as they can. Mm. Uh, 